Okay. So, last week, um, I had a lot of help with the sermon. I need to let you know this week, I don't need any help from you guys. I can do just fine myself. So, uh, we are going to finish what we started last week. I got a lot of phone calls. I got a lot of texts. I got a lot of messages. I, got, I even had people stopping by my house last week because of the sermon. And some of y'all just didn't like what was said. Too bad. The scripture is what the scripture is. Scripture says what the scripture says. And frankly, I don't care if you don't like me. That's all right. God says what he says here for a reason, okay? So, we are going to continue on with last week's sermon, and we're going to get to the real meat and potatoes. We're going to get to the crux of the situation, and hopefully I'm disliked even more. <laughs> yeah, I like controversy. So, last week um, was, um, uh, who do people say that I am? Yeah, who, who am I? I don't know why it's not right on my tablet. Who am I? So, we looked at this first part, and Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And uh, then he asked, who do you say that I am? And the challenge was that we need to care what people think about us. And there is, there's the rub right there. Lots of people, lots of you all um, are like, wait a minute, Pastor, I just got over this person being mean to me. I just got over this person not liking me. I just, you know, I just came to the place in my life where I'm, I'm okay with all of the bad things that have happened and yada, yada, yada. Okay, I, I'm, I'm happy for you. But let's get to the second half of this, pa of this passage, and let's see if your thoughts are right. Let's see if where you're at right now is the right place to be at, or if there's more to the story. How oh, Paul Harvey would say it, the rest of the story, right? So let's go ahead and let's, let's read this. We're going to skip by the, the whole first part real fast and then get into the second part. One day Jesus left the crowds to pray alone. And remember, he's been followed all over the place and, um, and it's been stressful for him. He's been healing folks. And um, you know, even though he's been a little miffed and a little upset about the crowds following him everywhere, he's still taking care of their needs. He's still making sure that they're healed and, they're, and that they're taught properly and uh, that those that are around him are, are loved on, basically. And even when you know, uh, there was like 15,000 and, and they didn't have anything to eat, and Jesus told his disciples, you, you go ahead and you feed them. And there's an important point there if they're having Jesus tell the disciples to feed them. Because we are his disciples and we are to carry on the work of Jesus. So you go ahead and you feed them. And so he, they fed the 5,000 and now Jesus is trying to get away by himself and he's with the disciples. And he asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others say you are one of the ancient prophets risen from the dead. And then he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter replied, and Peter's speaking for all the, all the disciples here, all the apostles here. Um, and uh, it says, you are the Messiah sent from God. You are the Savior. You are the Chosen One. You are the Son of God. That's what that word means. And so now we continue. Jesus warned his disciples not to tell anyone who he was. The Son of Man must suffer many terrible things, he said. He will, he will be rejected by elders, the leaders, priests, and teachers of religious law. He will be killed, but on the third day he will be raised from the dead. So he shows his future. And then the crowd, and then he said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. 
Take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try hanging on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but are yourself lost or destroyed? If anyone's ashamed of me and my messes, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in his glory and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. But I tell you the truth, standing here right now, uh, some standing here right now will not die before they see the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much, Lord, for letting us come back into your house today. Father, it's paramount that we understand this scripture. We ask, Lord, that you would open our hearts and our minds so that we can really, truly understand what you're teaching us. Lord, help us to put our ways aside this morning and help us to realize that your way is the only way. Father, this is going to be tough for some of us, and I pray your grace and mercy on us. In Jesus' name, amen. So last week we said that we have to care what other people think about us. And this week we find out why. Then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. So the question to you today is, do you want to be the follower of Jesus Christ? If you say yes, then the answer is you must give up your own way. And what does that mean? Stop doing things your way. Stop thinking about yourself. Stop focusing on what makes me better, what helps me, how I can be a better person. Because God makes you be a better person. When you serve Him, He flows out the Holy Spirit into you and you fill, you're filled with goodness and grace and mercy. And you become a better person. You become more holy. You work on holiness. So if you want to be a follower of Christ, you must give up your own way. What does that mean? Give up your own way. We found out last week that there was some touchy spots about how we look at things in life. How we look at our enemies. Those that don't like us. I've, I've, I've tried so hard to get along with my family and it just doesn't happen. And, and it works better for me to ignore them. Or it works better for me just to, just to tolerate them and not really communicate with them or hang out with them or anything like that. That works good for me. Well, what's Jesus saying here? It doesn't matter what, what works good for you. Ouch. And I can just see I'm going to have all kinds of phone calls already. I'm going to have people on my front porch. And, and some of you all, I know, are going to take that. And they're going to, you're going to say, wait a minute, Pastor. You don't know what the freak you're talking about. I, this works for me. And when I internalize stuff and I work it out in my own way, that works for me. It makes me a better person. No, it does not. It does not make you a better person. It makes you an introvert. It does not make you the kind of person that Jesus wants you to be. He wants you to follow his way, not your way. Amen? His way, not your way. And that doesn't make us happy, does it? Because of who we are as people, we want to do things our way. I'm always, I, and I'm, I'm probably the worst of this. No, you've got to do it my way. And I teach, I've taught this to the kids, and Daniel's back there laughing. I've talked to this talked to this this to my kids since day one. You do things my way, you'll be just fine. You do things my way, it'll be done right. But that's not the truth. That is an absolute lie. Because my way is not the best way. And that's tough for me to, that's tough for me to say. When I'm working on a car, it's got to be done my way. When I'm working on a kitchen sink, it's got to be done my way. When I'm up here preaching, it's got to be done my way. And that's not the best way. And most of the time, that's not even the right way. 
I have shared this story with you many times, and I don't know who remembers it, but I'm going to share it again because it applies. When I was, uh, I was working a handyman job up in Forster area, Forstville, up, up that way, and I had, to, I had to change out, I had to put a garbage grinder in a sink. That was one of the things that, you know, I, I'm good at. I can do that. There's just got to run a power line down from the, from the plug there and put a plug underneath and, and uh, a little switch up there and, you know, take the basket out and hook the garbage grinder up. No problem. Easy peasy two-hour job, right? Okay, so I'm underneath this sink, and this is a really fancy house. I mean, this is one of them houses where I, I, I wouldn't even dream to own because I'd have to pay somebody to clean it. And that, I mean, that, that's, just, that's just, that's not me. I like Little Houses. Uh, little House on the Prairie is one of my favorite TV shows because they've got this little tiny house with the, with the fireplace and the loft upstairs. That's perfect. I love that type of thing because nice and cozy and you can't get space. Once you give kids space, they're, you're in trouble. They start to do their own thing and act their own way. And when they act their own way, you can't teach them God's way so easily. So because kids like to, they like to act out. Anyway, this house is huge, and I'm in there, and I'm a little bit nervous because I don't want to get the floor all messed up, and I, you know, I definitely don't want to ding any paint because they're going to make me repaint the whole house, not to just one spot that I dinged. And um, so I'm underneath the sink, and I'm trying to get the basket out. And this is one of them expensive sinks. Um, it was, it was, uh, I don't, like a nickel sink. Nickel, yes, it was polished nickel of some kind. So not the old stainless steel sinks that you would throw in and, you know, you can replace for $129. That's not the type of sink it is. It's very expensive. And I'm trying to get the basket off. You, you know, you know, the old uh, TikTok thing, three hours later. That was me. Three hours later, I'm still trying to get the basket off the bottom of the sink. And I got all these pliers in there, and I'm twisting, I'm bending, I'm trying not to bend the, the sink itself, and, and, and the nut's starting to break, and, and the whole thing's just fused together, and I, and I can't get it, and I'm trying to do it my way. I'm like, I know how to do this. I've done this a hundred times. I've got to do it my way. And you know what? A, a voice stopped in my head and said, you know what? Don't do it your way. Do it my way. And I'm like, oh, I'm trying to do it my way. And God's like, no, you idiot, do it my way. I said, okay, all right, God. I'll do it your way, God. How do you want me to do it? And, you know, God normally doesn't talk audibly, so I just, you know, still, so small, still soft voice in my head. Softly is what I heard. I'm, okay. So I grabbed my specialty wrench I had big pliers on it and everything else, and so I grabbed my specialty wrench, and I just oh so gently pushed on the nut, and it, and it was loose, and it turned right off, and within 20 minutes, I, was, I had the whole thing installed, done, and out of there, because we're supposed to do things God's way. We're supposed to ask him, okay, God, I know what my way is, but what's your way? And when we deal with people, God's way is the way of love, care, and compassion. It doesn't matter how nasty somebody is to you. The Bible says that when you have love, care, and compassion on those people, you heap coals of fire onto their head. They, they get even madder at you, which is good. Because eventually, they're going to start to wonder why you're so nice to them. And... When they start to ask, hey, why is this person so nice to me? They're almost ready to realize because they're doing it God's way. So if you want to be my follower, Jesus says, you must give up your own way. Stop doing things the way you want things done. Do it the way God wants it done. Plain and simple. I don't know how I can be any clearer about that. I don't know how the scripture can be any clearer about that. And I know that in our hearts and in our souls and, and the, the way we are as people, we hate that idea. We can't stand that idea. Because what we're doing for us works. It just makes things easier when we do it our way, doesn't it? 
Until we realize and we start doing it God's way and we see that our way isn't so easy. Because that nut will just come right off real simple if you ask what God's way is. And if you got a few screws loose, God will tighten them up for you. You just have to ask Him. And most of us have a few screws loose. Most of us are just a little bit goofy here and there. Most of us have challenges that we need to work through. But yet we turn to ourselves and we try to do it ourselves instead of turning to the Word of God and turning to God and saying, God, help me with this. Let's get this fixed. Show me why your way works better than mine. And when we ask, show me why your way works better than mine, Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. And what does that mean? That means that you have to die to yourself. Take all the things that you want to do for yourself, all your ideas, all your ways of doing things, and kill them off and pick up the cross. That's what this means because Jesus died on the cross, didn't he? His human self died on the cross. And Jesus, the Messiah, raised from the dead. So we take all of our stuff, all of our ways of doing things, and we hang them on the cross and let it die on the cross and then pick up our new selves, our new beings. Colossians says, put on the new set of clothes. And when you put on the new set of clothes, things are all so much better. It says, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. So I try to do things my way, and I try to make things work my way, and it just doesn't work out. Eventually, we realize, no, that's not right. That can't be right. The way I'm doing it can't be right, because Jesus says we will lose our way. Try to hang on to your life. You will lose it. You'll lose your way, guys. You'll get so distracted. And you know what? This, is, this, this goes back to why people stop coming to church. They stop coming to church because they've got their own things to do in life. They've got things that are more important than coming to church. I have to go camping on Sunday. It's my only day off. I have to... I have to do this. I've got work I've got to do on Sunday. I don't know how many times I've heard about that. I've got yard work I've got to have. I've got to cut the grass. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. So I can't go to church on Sunday. And then you, you just get out of the habit of going to church. And then we have empty pews. And then we have people that are wandering around aimlessly. They're losing their lives. They're, they're going nuts. Because why? Because they don't have Jesus in their life anymore. They don't have fellowship in their life anymore. They don't have the message in their life anymore. That's how we lose it. That's how we lose it. And then things just, just don't work out, do they? And then I got you guys coming to me saying, Hey, Pastor, you know what? This isn't working out. Will you pray for me for this? And, and uh, you know, I, I've got this going on in my life. And I just shake my head. Yeah, I'm praying. I'll pray for you. I will absolutely pray for you. And I'm thinking, do you really want the, do you really want the, the truth? Do you want me to tell you the truth? And most of the time, whoever I'm talking to, you, they don't want the truth. They don't want the truth at all. They want, me to, they want me just to say something to help them feel better about themselves. How many times have you came to me and talked to me and want me to say something to help you feel better about yourself? Lots of times, right? Quite a few times. You want me to say something that's, that's going to that's gonna let you know that what you're doing is okay. Yes. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, that's what I'm here for, right? But there's a lot of times that I don't give you the right answer, or I don't give you the answer that you wanted. Sterling and Angie came and talked to me a while ago. I said, well, you know what the right answer is, don't you? And we did a wedding not too long after that. Absolutely true. Uh, Marge and Pat, they came to me 
Hey, will you pray? Will you, they're not here this morning, but will you pray? I point over here because that's where they normally sit. <laughs> will, you, uh, will you pray for us? This is going on. And I'm like, do you, do you really want the right answer? Well, and kind of, they come hemmed and hawed around. Well, I think we know what the right answer is. Well, the right answer is to fix your life. Follow what God says. And if God says, don't cohabitate, don't cohabitate, go ahead and get married. But if we get married... The money's not going to be there in the owl. Oh, man, I hear this all the time. We're older, and we've both got pensions. And if we get married, one of those pensions are going to be gone. And I can't trust God to take care of my finances. That's what I hear them say. They don't come out and say that, but that's what I hear them say. I can't trust God to take care of this. We had this conversation. Oh, Judy, we had this conversation the other day. I wasn't thinking about you when I said that. Because I've had it with so many people. I, I bet you I've had that conversation with at least 30 different couples. At least. So I wasn't pointing you out. I am now, but I wasn't. <laughs> it's, but it's true. And, and, that, and that's exactly what I told Judy too, wasn't it? And she didn't want to hear that. I could tell by the look in her eyes. She didn't want to hear that. But I've got to give, I've got to give a straight answer. You know what? It says you'll lose it. If you try to hang on to your life, if you try to hang on to your way, you will lose it. So I had somebody in the cafe, um, and this gal still hasn't talked to me. Chris knows about this. This gal still hasn't talked to me. She goes, pray that that I, I can wake up for church in the morning. And I looked at her and I said, we do the things that are important to us. That little girl got so mad at me. She still, it's been two years now. It's been about about two years. She has not said a word to me. She deliberately goes out of her way to avoid me. Just because I spoke the truth. Isn't that the truth though? The things that are important to us, we go out out of our way to do. For me, hunting is important to me. I am going to close down at least one or two days at the cafe so that I can go hunting because that's important to me. Now, if it was on a Sunday morning, do you think I'm going to close down the church or have somebody else come and preach for me because hunting is more important than church? No, I am not because church is more important to me. I love the things that God loves and God loves the church. I am not going to hang on to those things that I think are so important in my life so that I can lose it. It is not going to happen. It says, take up your cross and follow me. It doesn't just say, take up your cross. It says, take up your cross daily. Each and every day, take up your cross. Take those things in your life that that aren't godly and throw them away. Bury them deep in the ground. Don't focus on that stuff. It says, follow me. Jesus is saying, follow me. And if Jesus, the Messiah, we've identified him in the beginning here as the Messiah, right? Because Peter replies, you are the Messiah sent from God. So we identify Jesus as the Holy One, the one that has came to save us from our sins. So if he says, follow me, why should we ignore that? But we often do because we have our own ways of doing things. We have our own ways of living. We have our own belief system. And you know what, Pastor? I don't believe that this is right. I believe that I should be able to do whatever I want to do. So why don't you just take that page and rip it out of your Bible and throw it away? i tell you why I don't. Because I wouldn't have many pages left in my Bible if I ripped everything out that people didn't agree with because one people one person they don't agree with this page another person they don't agree with this page another person they don't agree with a whole chapter and and then there's all kinds of people i don't agree with the book of genesis because it doesn't include the big bang theory so now i got to rip out the whole book of genesis and you know what i don't i don't believe the laws apply to us anymore um so now i've got to rip out the book of deuteronomy and all 613 laws are gone now True, they don't apply, but they still have guidance and wisdom in them. 
Jesus completed the law. We know that. And since he completed the law, he says, follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. If you do the things that I tell you to do, you will live a full and abundant life. Things will work out just right for you. And you know what, Victoria's going through a lot. They're fixing to move. And you know what, if you know that that's what God wants you to do, that's going to be just fine. He's going to work that out so that you have your best life. And not that I'm a Joel Osteen fan, but that's a good saying. He has a book called Your Best Life Now. Not, I haven't read it, and I don't plan on reading it. But if you give your life up for my sake, Jesus said, you will save it. In the end, things are going to be just fine. Heaven will be yours. So, you know what? Sit back and think about what matters in life. Does a, does a, does a day away matter if there's a hub meeting and you're a leader in the church and you don't show up to the hub meeting because you need a day? Wait a minute. Something's not right there. Priorities. Set your priorities in Him. And oh, I can't go to church because whatever is going on. You know what? None of those things that are going on are as important as being in church. This is what's wrong with our society today. They think church is not important. Oh, I'm a Christian, but I don't go to church. Hogwash. Well, you can be. But, but if you don't, I don't, okay, I get you. I'll answer your question. But remember, I, I don't need help preaching today. I, I don't want to think, no, I, I just don't want, I don't want things to get out of control. Here we go, okay? So, you can be a Christian and not go to church, but if you are a Christian, you will want to go to church. All right? If you, if you are a Christian, you will want to fellowship. If you are a Christian, you will want to, to uh, have the music and, and the worship and everything. You will miss that in your life if you don't go to church. So that's why I say that those people that say, I don't have to go to church, I can be a Christian and I don't have to go to church, and I love Jesus, I say hogwash, you don't even know Jesus. The great Adrian Roberts if you don't know who that is, you need to look him up, and you need, you need to watch his sermons. He is an amazing man. He's an amazing orator. Um, the great Adrian Roberts said, said that the best. That if you love God, you'll love the church. And if, and if you don't love the church, if you don't miss going to church, you don't know God. That's tough. There's a lot of tough things that Jesus said, and this whole series has been difficult. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you are yourself lost or destroyed? What if, you know, I do everything that I want to do in life. I've got all my bucket list, and I do my whole bucket list, and, and I've gained all the things that I want to gain, and I've got all the, all the kids that I want, and I've got all the, you know, the family that I want, some family I don't want, but I've got, I've got all the family that I want, and I've got the toys that I want, and you know what? Everything is just fine, but I don't go to church. I don't do the things that God wants. What? It says that it'll destroy you. And what if you benefit what if you and what if what you do benefits you and you gain the whole world but you yourself are destroyed? Yeah. What if the things we do are that we think they're good for us but we are not paying attention to what God's saying? That destroys us. That makes us horrible, nasty people, but we think we're okay. We think everything's going to be all right. 
well, you know what? Everything's not going to be all right unless we give it to him. If anyone's ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in his glory, in the glory of the Father and the angels. If anybody's ashamed of me, doing things your way means that you're ashamed of God. And not speaking up for the things of God means that you're ashamed of God. We need to speak His message. We need to speak His truth. We need to We need to ask, who do people say that I am? We need to care what other people think about us and how they look at us. Because we need to spread the gospel message. Because if we don't care what other people think of us, then we don't care what other people think about God. Because we are His ambassadors We are His messengers. We are the ones that have been called to take the gospel message. If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when He returns in His glory. So when God comes back, if you don't want Him to be ashamed of you, don't be ashamed of Him. Live right. Always err on the side of holiness. Stand firm in your Christian beliefs. There are going to be people that are not going to like you too much. But they didn't like Jesus either, did they? The religious rulers didn't like Jesus. Pharisees didn't like Jesus. And Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Some standing here right now will not die before they see the kingdom of God. Which means, some of you, Jesus is saying, some of you will see me die and, and, rode, and raised again. Some of you will see me die on the cross and then ascend into heaven. And that is the completion of, Of what the Son of Man was called to do. That means. That what he's saying is true. Because he says right there. I tell you the truth. All of this is true. There's not one lie. There's not one exaggeration. There's not one thing that I've said this morning. That is not true. And as they saw the Messiah go up into heaven and sit at the right hand of the Father, we will see the Messiah return for us. And we mustn't have Him be ashamed of us. We have to live right here on earth. God, not our way, but Your way. Not our way. Even though we like to do things our way. We like to live right our way. Not our way. Not our way, but God's way. And the the more we turn to Him, the more we talk to Him, the more we read His Bible, the more we pray, the more we communicate, the easier it gets. Let's pray. Father God, we know that this morning was a tough message. Tough for me and tough for each and every one of us. Lord, we pray that you will that you'll help us to identify your way. That we can be people of your way. That we would put the way we do things aside. That we would bury them, Lord. That it would be uh, that we lay them at the foot of your cross and and that they disappear forever, that our ways wouldn't be in us anymore. But they, we would reflect you and your holiness. Help us to go this week. Help us to focus on you. Help us to put ourselves aside. Help us to realize that we need to love the things that you love. 
And you love people. We need to love people. You love the church, and we need to love the church. You love the scriptures, and we need to love the scriptures. You love holiness, and we need to love holiness. And you love ourselves, and we need to love ourselves, Lord. And loving ourselves, God, means that we put off the old and put on your new your new salvation for each and every one of us. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.